All right, so key economic news this week. Congress back in session and continued focus on the Fed's QE2 program. Sherry Cooper, Chief Economist of BMO Financial Group, here to discuss all of it. Thanks for coming in. I appreciate it. You're welcome. My pleasure. Uh, looking first at, at the economic news ahead this week, pretty strong retail sales on Monday morning, autos especially strong. What does that indicate for you? I mean, looking ahead to Q4 GDP, that's a good signal, but is this just an anomaly or is this the beginning of the trend, the beginning of the pickup that we need to see? I think it's a, it's a trend now. Um, we've seen now uh, four to five consecutive months of improving retail sales. Mm -hmm. Uh, that's that's great news, and it, it's interesting that we are even beginning to see like the gardening sector and <laughs> home renovation sector improving. Uh, as well, there has been a modest but significant uptick in consumer confidence. Mm -hmm. uh, the labor market certainly still very much. Um, excess supply of work workers and unemployment still high but at least the private sector is beginning to hire on a relatively consistent basis mm -hmm. so my view is that we could well see a much better christmas this year than last year and that's always so important that's a key time for retailers and, and what else ahead this week that you're looking at that you think is, is of significance because a lot of focus will be on congress back in session and and still talk in the wake of the G20 about the Fed's decision. But outside of that, what do you think is critical this week? Well, I'm looking toward an uptick in industrial production. Mm -hmm. We saw a surprising decline in industrial production in the prior month. Uh, but I do think there will be an uptick. And then there will be lots of debate around the PPI and CPI sure, numbers. Sure, inflation. Inflation because of both what the Fed is doing to mm -hmm. fight deflation and as well the commodity prices surging, food prices surging. Mm -hmm. uh, and that will show through in the, um, the crude component of PPI. Um, the finished good follow through though I think will be limited and I think that the core CPI numbers year over year will only be about uh, 0.7%, which if that's the case, it'll be the lowest level in 49 years. So again, back to the Fed's concern about potential deflation. And also, in the wake of what the Fed has done, QE2, there's been the concern of potential runaway inflation down the road. That doesn't seem to be a concern of yours whatsoever. Well, it's because the Fed isn't going to just pump money into the system and then sit back. They're mm -hmm. going to watch the incoming data. They're going to be very mindful of all the developments that are happening. And they will begin to buy back, I'm sorry, to sell bonds mm -hmm. when they think that there's enough of it. In your most recent note, you warned against protectionism, saying that could really hurt this recovery if leaders are too protectionist. Explain what you mean. Oh, well, trade is key to the global rebound. And if we were to see protectionist movements, this would contract the goods and services across borders. It would cause a major slowdown in countries like China and Germany and in the United States. One of the positives is that our trade balance is beginning to improve. So, Are you hopeful that you won't see those protectionist policies right. now that we're through the G20? Are you hopeful that that won't happen? Yes, and especially so because the president has repeatedly said that uh, trade restrictions would, would be very negative for the economy.